Soviet times, Jews suffered from persecution. Um, it was illegal, basically, to live a Jewish life. It was illegal to gather as Jews. Not only were the synagogues closed, and the schools closed, and the Jewish hospital closed, and all the Jewish infrastructure, but what Jews lost was the memory and the knowledge of what it means to be Jewish. If you take any sociologist or historian and you explain what the reality was, uh, seven years where basically Jewish life was forbidden, and you ask that professional to sort of forecast what he expects to happen in the future, most of the assumptions would be that there wouldn't be any future for Jewish life in the former Soviet Union. Были ограничения на поступление еврейской молодежи в институты, и тем более были ограничения поступления в аспирантуру. И огромное количество молодежи еврейской просто не могло попасть в целый ряд институтов. Были запрещены книги на иврите, а те люди, кто пытался изучать иврит и пользоваться ими, рисковали потерять свободу, быть сосланными и попасть в тюрьму. Soviet Union was a bad place for everybody. But Jews were not only deprived of their freedom, they were deprived of their identity. There were no Jewish schools, there were no opportunity um, to go to synagogues. You are socially isolated and stigmatized. You could not know or learn anything about your language, about your culture, about your history, about your religion. You are almost an enemy of the people. They were under Soviet domination and uh, reduced to a life of poverty and, and generally speaking, misery. Soviet Jews simply said, we're never going to get rights here in the Soviet Union. We simply want to leave. The numbers of people able to leave were shrinking dramatically. You couldn't even move to a larger, more metropolitan city, let alone move to another country. When one, two, three, four, five began to say, uh, let my people go. They were taking on the greatest totalitarian power on earth. So many Jews started learning in the underground about their own identity. The Soviet Jewry movement was really the Jewish civil rights movement. I started to try and organize protests. I wrote letters every day to the Soviet officials. Было достаточно большое количество среди советских евреев, которые не готовы были смириться с этим. Они организовывали семинары по изучению еврита. Они, так сказать, пытались разобраться, в чем корни проблем, и пытались добиться выезда из Советского Союза. Люди рисковали. Люди рисковали и давали поддержку евреям. Вы знаете, я очень хорошо помню, была организация, которая связывалась со многими странами для того, чтобы вытащить евреев, которые находились тогда за железным занавесом. Many were arrested and interrogated, intimidated, put it in gulag. I was at that time already 10 years in the prison. We can go back to slavery. We could never survive in the Soviet Union this struggle even one day if it didn't become immediately, immediately, the movement of all the Jews of the world. First of all, of American Jewry. I was haunted, I was arrested sometimes, uh, uh, persecuted in different forms. He also fought for the love of his life, Avital. <laughs> בחור הזה לשמחה שבעיניו ולחופש שהיה בעיניו ולאומץ לב כזה לעמוד מול שם בחצי, בצד השני של הרחוב עמדו אנשי קגב. But on the eve of their wedding, they were cruelly separated by the Soviet regime. אני מוזמנת פתאום למשרד של הוויזות. והם אומרים, אם את לא עוזבת, לעולם לא תצאי, לא את ולא חתנך. אני מחליטה פה בשבילי שאני לא אצא מרוסיה עד שאני אראה את נתן, ועד שאנחנו נתחתן. היינו בטוחים שזה ייקח כמה חודשים עד שנהיה ביחד. זה לקח 12 שנה. Some of us came to the Soviet Jewry movement because of what we saw as the failure of American Jews to save 
six million Jews. Never again was not to be just a hollow phrase that we yell at rallies, but it's something we had to live. I had a meeting with Gorbachev, and he went after me. As you had this away, I'm always meeting with all these lousy Jews. And I said to him, have I got a deal for you. If you think they're lousy Jews, we'll take them off your hands. <laughs> there was much talk about Gorbachev making a historic first visit to the United States. What were we going to do? How were we going to respond, galvanize? And there was a debate for some time. Do we call a rally if uh, we can't uh, have a crowd? In the end, this was a crapshoot. But nothing prepared us for what happened. We began to get requests for first dozens and then scores and then hundreds of bus parking permits. You know, an average of 40 to 50 people a bus. Well, wait, we now have 200 buses, 300 buses, 400 buses, 500 buses. One of the memories that sears in my mind uh, was seeing people walking onto the mall from every direction. This whole wave of humanity. The stage was in the middle of the mall. We turned around. There are thousands of people coming from the other direction. Buses streaming in from all sorts of places around the country. People flying in to the airports. People came from every community around the country. And you look out and you saw tens and tens of thousands of people in this bitter cold. It was really stinky weather. We don't care if the program is one hour or four hours. Um, we're here. On December 6th, 1987, we were no longer the Jews of silence. We were the Jews who found our voice. You can still feel the echoes today. We had the leadership of America speak. Let them go. Let them go. We landed in Israel on April 20th, 1988. I think of the sight of Nathan Sharansky, still in the dominion of his KGB captors, zigzagging his way across the tarmac after they ordered him to walk a straight line. On that same historic day, Sharansky arrives in the land of Israel to the joy of his mother and wife, to thousands of rejoicing Israelis and Jews around the world. Anatoly Sharansky has fought heroically alone under tremendous pressure as a proud Jew, as a freedom lover person, as a man with a mission, as a devoted Zionist and show that you can arrest a body, you cannot put in prison a spirit. Faith prevails. After his release, Sharansky continues his struggle for the freedom of Soviet Jewry. Natan Sharansky, the hero who inspired a generation, minister in four consecutive Israeli governments, the only foreign recipient of both the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Presidential Medal of Freedom never loses sight of his mission. The impact of those former Soviet Jews is tremendous. Five Nobel Prize winners, uh, numerous medical innovations, Google. I very well remember the beginning, and I remember и как начали опускаться самолеты, приземляться самолеты, и как выходили из них тысячи людей каждый день. Довольно приличная цифра. Где-то недалеко от двух миллионов, если говорить об израильских гражданах. Приехало свыше 100 тысяч инженеров, приехало 25 тысяч врачей, Приехало свыше 20 тысяч э, людей с медицинским средним образованием, то есть медсестры, медбратья. The impact of Aliyah 25 years ago on country today. In 1990, when uh, the big Aliyah started, so the, the average income in Israel uh, was something like $16,000 per capita per year. This year is about $42,000 per capita. So, and uh, uh, if you ask me how we did it, a lot because of these million Russian or Polish uh, immigrants, Jewish people that came to this country. Because if we don't spend the time now educating what it was to be successful through a movement of unity, political activism as a community, our kids will never know about it. 
The goal really of, of the initiative is not to be comprehensive, it's trying to recapture a sense of pride of the Soviet Jewry movement. I think that it's an opportunity for us to tell the story of the values that are inherent in the traditions of the Jewish people to our children and our grandchildren and to get it incorporated not in Jewish schools but in every school. I want every Jew in the world to feel as I felt. If you want to fight for the better future, you must first of all to be proud Jew, connected to your people, and while we have big external challenges, Jewish agency concentrates on no more, no, no, no less important challenge for strengthening Jewish identity, for strengthening connection of every Jew in the world with their heritage, with their community, <coughs> with the state of Israel, and as a result, to inspire and to empower Jewish people in their struggle for our family and for our state.